Okay, here's our fuel sender. And here's the uh, part that goes back to the gauge. And this is the part that's going to the sender in the gas tank. And the way I understand it, the, uh, the black and the yellow are what you want to measure the resistance for. I've got it set on 20K ohms. I touch my leads together. Zero ohms. Okay, back to one or infinity again. And I'm going to go across here. This is the black pin. And there is the yellow pin. And it's showing, you know, infinite resistance. So we have an open. Okay. Not a short. A short would say, hey, we got a full tank of gas. It doesn't do that. Now. Let's say you want to find out um, whether this thing uh, has gas or not. I mean, whether the uh, not no. I know it has gas, but it's, but you want to make sure that your fuel gauge is working correctly. Hmm. Wow, I'm gonna need a car key for that, aren't I? Okay. Well, let me go get my car key. Okay. So now. Um, we're going to test the fuel gauge. We already tested the uh, fuel sender in the uh, tank there. It's showing infinite resistance. Which means if we turn on the key here. That. Uh, ouch. Oh, I need light again. Okay, there we go. So right now we don't have the key on and you can see it's as empty as can be. So I'm going to turn the key now. Not going to start the engine, just going to turn it where it would show the amount of fuel we have. And it should start beeping. Okay, there it is, beeping at me. And the fuel gauge does not even budge an inch. So... In order to test the gauge without putting a new gauge in yet, I mean not without putting in a new fuel sender yet, what we'll do is uh, we're going to add some resistance here. I believe this is like a 10 ohm resistor, which should simulate close to a full tank of gas. So, we go to the 200 scale, and it's showing, what is it? About 10, 10 and a half ohms. So we're going to take this resistor and we're going to place it across the yellow and black leads. Alright. You don't understand why? Well then, find somebody who does. Alright, so put one wire in that hole, put the other wire there. And now it should almost go up to full, if not all the way to full. Alright, so let me climb in the car now. And see what happened here. Okay, look, the fuel gauge is going up. And that's a good sign. It's still going up. It's almost a full tank of gas right now. Uh, it's still edging up a little bit more, slowly but surely. It's getting near the full mark. And, uh, yeah, it's saying we got a full tank of gas now, if you can see that. Now, let's simulate what it would be like if we're getting near empty. And, uh, I have another resistor to put on here. Take this one out, the 10 ohm resistor, and here is another resistor, I think it's 75 ohms, okay, yeah, 75 ohms, okay, once again, let's place a 75 ohm resistor across the yellow and the black pins.
Okay, I think we got it. Now let's go look at our gauge and see what it's showing. And uh, there it is. It didn't go all the way to the bottom, but it's saying we're oh empty. Just a little bit below E. So that would simulate a low fuel tank, but really most tanks when they're on E still have a little bit of gas left. It's just the way they designed them. Now maybe if the engine were running, that might affect slightly, you know, it might affect it slightly where it would be on E, a little above it or a little bit below it. Same thing with the uh, full tank with it running but that's just a simulation so our gauge is good if I now shut off the key the gauge should go down way low here so let's see and there it is it's drifting down completely now with uh, with no voltage to uh, the car right now or at least to the gauge here and that's what it's like when it's really empty. <laughs> okay, so we've tested our old sender, which is bad. We tested the new sender, which appears to be functional. And we tested our gauge, and that seems to be correct as well. So, uh, that's all fine. The only thing left to do now is uh, to remove the old gauge. Oh, and the resistors. Remove the old gauge and put in the new gauge. Wire it up. Here's our wires. It goes through here into the main harness or one of the branches of the main harness. Um, you know, uh, we'll see how we're going to wire it here. Like I said, I already identified the wires here. The black is ground. The yellow is for the fuel gauge. Uh, and the yellow with the stripe. And it looks like a yellow with a, like either a blue stripe or a green stripe. That stripe, I think, is for the thermistor. And I really can't tell you what that does. But I don't think it's necessary. But we'll, we, we will wire it up. And as long as I'm here, I might as well point to where things go here's your black ground here's your whoops let me use this here's your yellow terminal for the uh, fuel gauge and here is the yellow with the striped I, I'm gonna say blue that's uh, for the thermistor you know, I think you can run it with just two wires, the black and the yellow, but we'll hook up all of them. So now all we got to do is uh, remove the old fuel gauge. Oh, yeah, did I fail to mention? Sure I did. But here's the access lid, which I already removed, and maybe I already made a video on it showing how to remove that. Um, the gauge is not perfectly centered. I mean, the you know... Not the gauge. I keep calling it the gauge. The sender is not perfectly centered in this access hole. And they make it sound like you can get this gauge out through this hole here. You know, there's not really much room here for pounding this thing. So I'm going to try and improvise here a way to take this gauge off of here. 